Hey everyone, it's Melissa. Today's video is favorites. I don't have a ton. They're for like uh, maybe August, September, and October, or September, October. Of course, I don't have a bunch because a good part of that time I was recovering from surgery, didn't really care about wearing too much makeup, and I was a little down and moody and, you know, just felt a little traumatized. So I didn't feel like really making videos or thinking about favorites. I did what I could, but, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the best time of my life. But anyway, it's getting past me and uh, so, but I do have some favorites that hopefully will be helpful to, to you all or maybe something that, you know, you might like. So I'll go ahead and get started. The first one are these two turtlenecks. Um, I have, I have to wear this heavy bra. So I have to be a little careful about what I wear. You know, I have a lot of off-the-shoulder stuff that I want to get back to wearing again. I know a lot of you all don't like it. You all tell me. I do like off-the-shoulder stuff because it's comfortable. It elongates my, my shoulders are very narrow. My hips are wide. And I very much look pear-shaped with not the right kind of top. So I like to do something, a boat neck to elong elongate it. I, I, my, base, my favorite is a boat neck. You know, it's kind of, on, it's not off the shoulder, but it's a boat neck. But this bra that I have to wear right now shows. So I've been wearing a lot of turtlenecks. And also I've had to sleep kind of sitting up. So my neck lines have become more prominent. I'm working on that uh, right now and they are getting better. And plus I've gone back to being able to sleep flat again. That helps more than anything. I'm telling you all, sleeping just as flat as you can on your back, it just lifts that whole area. But I dig digress. These are some turtlenecks I got, and I will wear them all winter long. They're long sleeve. Let me do the lighter color one. Um, I'll show you a picture of somebody wearing them. So this is the back, and it's got this seam up the back here. And the, you know, it's just a little knit turtleneck. I got the kind of reddish orange. And then it's got this little feature here with the sleeves being, you know, ruched. They're gathered right there. It's just really cute. And I got this color, uh, which, you know, will last me all winter. I have a, one long sleeve black turtleneck. And then I wanted two other colors to wear during the winter time some, and then a purple one. Made the same way with the seam up the back and the gathering on the sleeves. So I got that from these from Banana Republic Factory Outlet. Okay, so let me go ahead and talk about makeup, I guess. Um, I enjoyed wearing, when I did wear makeup, the Anastasia Beverly Hills, uh, it's the Fall Romance. I did a whole video on it, which I will link, and it's just really pretty. Okay, now, I was thinking about the Sephora VIB sale starting, you know, would I recommend buying this, and yes, to a certain extent, but if you're going to buy one, Anastasia Beverly Hill palette. The two palettes that I would buy and are thinking about buying as backups for this the Sephora VIB sale is the Soft Glam. Um, uh, this is my second one that I've had and I've already gone through this one and it's just a lovely, lovely palette. Gorgeous. Uh, yeah, obviously that is my favorite color. I have this palette on today. It never fails to give me a just a really nice eye. So if you're going to buy Anastasia Beverly Hills, I would go old school and buy the Soft Glam. It's still available. I just looked it up. So that's, that's my recommendation. And I would go old school if you want a warm palette because I think there's nothing better. I don't know how many of these I've bought. This might be my third one. It is the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. To me, they broke the mold when they made this and nothing else. I bought a lot of warm palettes because I enjoy wearing them in the warm seasons and a lot and tend to wear cool palettes in the wintertime in the summer, but I really like warm palettes too. 
To me, they broke the mold after this one. Nothing, nothing in all my collection, nothing holds a candle to this one. To me, it's the granddaddy or the grandmother of warm palettes and it's, it's the best. It's the best and the best cool palette was also an Urban Decay, the Smoky palette. You know, they took it away. You could buy it on sale for different places for a while, but it's just pretty much gone now. I still have two backups of it, but you know, why? It's kind of like, well, why use it? I can't buy it when I use it up. You know, it just, I, I, I mean, I should use it up, but it just like, I don't want to, you know, because I'm so mad. But it's the most beautiful cool palette. This is the most beautiful warm palette. Um, so, if you were going to buy two palettes in the sale, I would buy these two. Uh, I wore them a bunch. They're favorites all the time. The reason they're not favorites for this month is that I've mentioned them both before, but uh, yeah, I would buy it during the sale. I love those palettes, both of them. Okay, Lipsticks. I wore the heck out of two lipsticks with my warm looks, like with my Victoria uh, back on the eye, pen, eye, eye crayon that I bought, and other warm looks that I have bought, even with the Urban Decay Heat palette. These are two from L'Oreal, and they are hard to find. I'll see if I can still find them, but I have this top is bugging me. But the last time I looked, I was able to find them, and they're from L'Oreal, and they both begin with new, N-U. One of them is 178, it is new excessive. They're very similar. Okay, the other one is 172. And it is new determine this dress y'all this top's driving me crazy it's really cute and everything but it keeps showing the top of this bra it's one of those zip up ones that i have to wear you know okay they are so similar <laughs> i've never seen two two lipsticks is similar no wonder i like them both let me see if i can see a difference um yeah i think the 178 is a little oranger and then the 172 is a little browner but they're very similar. Okay, I showed you one. I showed you 178 is at the top, 172 is at the bottom. So they're they're just both so similar that I think you could just buy one. I was looking for a particular color that was, and I couldn't decide which of these that I wanted, and I found them on sale, so I bought them both at the drugstore. But uh, yeah, I like both of these. I think the 178 has a little more orange to it. The 172 has a little more brown to it. So, uh, But I wore those. Whenever I put on makeup, I always seem to put these two on and really, really liked it. Now, the lipstick that I put on the most, usually it would have been uh, Peachy Keen by The Cream Shop, but I really got into BK Beauty and the color Kindness. It's just gorgeous it over here. It's real similar to the others also. It's a little more peachy pink. So it's got a little bit more of that pink to it, but those are the three lipsticks that I wore these past two months. And you know, sometimes I would put on a little makeup just to make myself feel better, even if I wasn't going to be doing a video. Uh, you know, just to kind of lift my spirits a little bit, and that helps some. So I saw this on Instagram. It was one of those Instagram advertisements. I tend not to look at those and don't buy them at all, but this one caught my eye because they demonstrated, and I do like it, they demonstrated how if you've got fuzzy, frizzy hair, flyaway hair, which I, des I very much do, to spray it on and then do your heat, your style, or whatever you do. Do it wet, you can do it dry. And go ahead and style it, and it will keep frizz from coming on. I didn't use it today because I wanted it, uh, I don't know, I just didn't use it today. It felt fine. 
that I didn't feel like I needed to use it. But my last two videos and people had commented on my hair look nice, I had to use this. I kind of feel like it's a little bit of a secret weapon. It's an IGK Good Behavior. It's a spray. It smells really good. I like the way it smells. But now, it has protein in it. And so, I have done a video of my hair getting damaged by too much protein. And so, I think it was... This does not seem to bother it. It's mo I've used it time and time again, you know, for the past several weeks uh, when I would, every time I would do my hair different ways, uh, even just doing it straight, I would put this on and it would just make it real smooth. Uh, and it did not seem to have a buildup of protein on me, even though it does have protein in it. So if you're very protein sensitive, this may not work for you, but if you feel like maybe your hair might need a little protein, this would you know this might be a good one to try um i can just tell uh it's a fine line with protein with my hair with flyaway hair that's delicate and gets damaged and stuff i get too much and it gets too brittle um and i get too little and it's just doesn't do anything it need it needs help you know then because your hair needs some protein but i like this a lot it's got uh, spir spirulina protein, which I understand is an antioxidant. I think it comes from algae. And, uh, you know, it's it's got a lot of buzz. It's supposed to be, you know, when you in eat it, it's supposed to be really good for you, an antioxidant, and really helps you. I don't know what it does on dead hair. Uh, it might probably just be a gimmick. I can't see that it's penetrating dead, dead hair and all this hair down here is all dead. But, you know, okay, they're, they're, they're saying that. I did notice it was way down on the ingredient list, and I did notice that it had other two proteins, that it had wheat protein and soy protein. Uh, I don't put this on my roots because I think it would make my hair too flat at the roots, but when I have some frizz going on, especially lying around with, you know, moving my head back and forth, you know, in pain sometimes, my hair just would get really, really frizzy. It just tends to be so frizzy anyway. And this does help calm it down. So I did want to mention it because um, it has been a favorite this month for me. I heard this was pretty common uh, when you have expanders. When you've had breast surgery, like a, um, you know, a mastectomy. I've had, I did both, a double mastectomy. So they put two expanders in there and they put expanders, they put fluid in to kind of stretch your skin in before they put the final implant in. Uh, you know, it's very uncomfortable. The expanders are thick and they've got valves in them and it kind of rubs underneath your skin. Well, what it has also done on me, and I've heard of other people too, it, it, it's been hurting my back. And my back's been hurting. I've never had back aches before, never had any back issues, but I am now on my shoulder blades you know, on the back side of the implants. My shoulder blades hurt and burn a whole lot. Well, Doug bought me this. It is a heating pad for the shoulders and the neck. It helped so much. I haven't been using it for a bit and my, sh my shoulder blades are starting to hurt again. And so I'm gonna have to use it again. The thing I like about this one, I'll try to find it online. It's got a whole bunch of settings. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, intensities of heat and then it's got uh, you can set it for 30 minutes to go off 60 minutes 90 minutes or 120 minutes uh, so I like that it doesn't stay on all the time but you can if you wake up like I would I would put it on at night or when I was taking a nap because I was sleeping some uh, then I would put it on and if it you know it would still stay slightly warm for a bit after it shut itself off but I would put it on the 120 and take my naps or go to sleep and then it would shut off while I was asleep. So, uh, and I tend to put it on the lowest heat so that while I was sleeping, it wouldn't, it would just be warm enough to be where it would help those muscles. I think it's muscles. They manipulate your muscles and that expander is just pulling against your muscles and everything. And it just is painful. Uh, it's just an uncomfortable thing. I'll be glad to have my final surgery and get them out after the new year. So, but until then, I'll keep on using my heating pad. And let me show you the name of it again. I 
I think we probably got it at CVS or something, but oh, we may have ordered it off Amazon. I'll look, but it really, really, if you have neck, shoulder pain at all, I highly recommend this. It's been, you can turn it as warm as you want or as slightly warm as you want where it's comforting. Uh, I think it will help keep you warm in the winter time too. I think that's it for that. I will go on now to, uh, I have one game and just three things that we watched. I tended to watch when I was recovering. Well, I'll tell you what I did. I played a game and I'll tell you about the game. Well, let me just talk about it first. It was a game. I told you all the last time I did favorites that I, to distract myself from worrying, from waking up in the middle of the night, panicked that I had cancer, I was working on the game June's Journey, and I still like it, but I've gone on to another game. It was an advertisement during June's Journey, and a big thing now that a lot of people play are merge games. Now, merge games are when you, it's a little bit of a strategy. You take one item, you merge it into another, you can merge it into another, merge it into another, another, and you can progress in the game by merging and and using the things that you have merged with to gain p points and use the points to buy other things or get other things to merge. I, it, it's it's just it's self-explanatory, but there is some strategy behind it. And then I got on Reddit community for uh, Merge Mansion, and I've enjoyed being over there. Uh, but I would wake up in the middle of the night scared and troubled, and so. Just, I don't know, looking at that online community and looking at and playing Merge Mansion and kind of figure out, what am I going to do next? Should I merge this? How am I going to merge that? Ooh, I want to play for that prize. You know, you get prizes and stuff. I want to work and merge to play, play for that prize. It kept me off the fact that things, serious things were going on inside of me. If you can stay calm while serious things are going on inside of you, that helps the good part of you, the strong part of you, fight the bad things that are trying to enter your body or that are in your body that your strong parts need to fight and defeat. So staying calm, that helped me. It was definitely a favorite. Um, I like Merge Mansion a whole lot. Okay, now seems like I mentioned this, but I didn't see it on my past videos, so maybe it was because I mentioned it on Instagram. We watched the last season, we've watched three seasons of Only Murders in the Building. And it just really seems like I talked about it, but I, in case in case I didn't, I'm going to talk about it again. It stars Steve Martin. I think Steve Martin helped write it and produce it too. Martin Short and Selena Gomez. Those three, the first two you could see together, but with Selena Gomez, it's the third sidekick. They have a podcast, a true crime podcast. And so... A murder keeps happening. They live in this old building, and a murder keeps happening each season. A new murder will happen in their building. So they solve it and do a podcast about it. It is adorable. It is so good, and I love the characters. I had never really... I'd heard of Selena Gomez, but she's very interesting. Uh, I think she's a good actor, and I like the way she talks. She talks a little bit from the back of her throat, and kind of, I don't know, it's just a very interesting way that she pronounces and, and speaks, and I find it very intriguing. Uh, we like this a whole lot. Of course, we like Steve Martin. Martin Short, I, I like better than I always did before. Uh, he's good in it, too, but it's, it's very good, and it was a good distraction also. And we watched it on Hulu. The next one we watched on BritBox not long ago called The Sixth Commandment. This was, this is a British um, series, uh, mini-series, on BritBox, and it was about a true, it was about a crime that took place of this man that, I don't want to give away too much, but this man, this young um, psychopath, <laughs> uh, you know, he comes across as charming, he charms vulnerable and older people and, and then commits crimes, but you don't you don't really realize it, and they don't really realize it, and the family don't, families don't really realize it, and it's based on true stories. This was a real person that did all that. The acting of the main actor that played the main character, oh my goodness, he's going to be an up-and-comer. He was so, so beautifully cold, you know, so uh, 
just appearing so normal and charming, but he was so bad. You know, it, it was good acting, good acting. Okay, and that was on BritBox. The last one that we watched was on BritBox, and we just finished it. It was a like a mini series, and this one is a true crime. Uh, true, this one's a true story too. It's called The Hunt for Raoul Moat, and uh, Raoul Moat was uh, well, he committed these crimes, but it was the biggest manhunt at the time in UK history, and so this was a true story, and so. I, we really enjoyed it, how it was done from, a little bit from his perspective, but from the solving the crime perspective, that, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the, how, what they go through, the clues they get, what they do with DNA, what they do. That's why I like to watch true crime, how these crimes are solved, especially cold case crimes, you know. Uh, I like podcasts that have cold case, case crimes that they've solved, like through DNA analysis. It's like, okay you finally get caught, you know, that just makes me feel really good. So uh, anyway, that is it. That is all of it. Uh, I'm going to get off here because I have been on here for a bit. But thank you for watching. I have got one more product for a new video I've got coming up about doing my wing liner and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed these favorites and uh, I'll talk to you in a couple of days and happy Halloween. Uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.